is going on, everybody? It is your favorite Auntie Mo, and we are back for another episode review of this doggone real black china. This is season one, episode, I don't know, 11, 12. I'm going to put it, there you go. That's, that's, that's what it is. Get out. Before we get into this review, if you have not done so just yet, go ahead and do your auntie a favor. Go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Let me know what y'all think about this video. Give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. And then hit that notification bell so you know when your auntie done uploaded some new content. Y'all look. Next season, if she have one, your auntie ain't going to be reviewing it. I'm sorry. No. No. Auntie ain't finna do it. Nope. Auntie ain't finna do it. No, boo. I don't care. No, I'm not fitting to do it. Y'all, I feel like I've lost more brain cells watching the real black China than I had in my college years of smoking weed. Like, y'all, this, you know, as a person that started off as a real big fan of black China, I thought the girl was beautiful. I thought she was intelligent. I thought she was a businesswoman. I thought she was a cool friend. She seemed like a cool person. She seemed like a sweet, loving person. She seemed like somebody that was just a fun person. Again, this is all from TV. Now, the name of her show is The Real Black China. And baby, if this is The Real Black China, girl, I see why you have gone through so many people in your life because, baby, it was just, <sighs> y'all, I, I don't know. And see, that's another reason why I don't like reviewing this show because I feel like the stuff that I say ain't really a whole lot of positive. It's a whole lot of negative, and I don't like that. That ain't the reason why I want to come and give you these reviews. Unless I'm giving you something negative on one of my drama shows like How to Get Away with Murder or Power, yeah, that's different because drama is is a must with that. But a reality is like, girl. Girl. But y'all, hopefully y'all are ready for the review because I don't wasted enough time ranting and raving about it. Hopefully y'all are ready for the review because I'm ready to give it to you. So let's get right on up into it. Y'all, so the episode starts off. It's Black China and it is her makeup artist. His name is Alex. They're in her house and they're playing pool. First of all, China looked beautiful. Her hair, her makeup, even her outfit was that she had on looked beautiful. She looked nice. She looked subtle. It wasn't this loud, crazy green hair. None. She looked. She looked really beautiful. They were talking about how the church service went. She said she liked everything. It was going real good. Then they get to talking about the whole situation that happened with Jamal. She said after the church service was over that she went backstage and she had ended up getting some text messages from a friend of hers. Now, remember I told you in the last video, if you have not seen Ashton Levi, you know he was her assistant. He has a YouTube channel as well. He already spilled the tea in his last couple of videos. He said that the person that sent her the those text messages was Densia, the skin bleaching girl. Yeah, huh? Since her text messages that Jamal had sent, basically where he was talking crap about her, where he was saying that she's not paying her bills, she does a bunch of drugs, she's just a mean, hateful, mean person, yada, yada, yada. Now, China said that her feelings were hurt just from seeing all the text messages that Jamal had sent. She said she had confronted Jamal about it, and Jamal basically denied it and said that he never sent any, sent any of that. Now, her friend Alex, who's the makeup artist, starting off, he seemed like the, a really good listening ear. He seemed like somebody that was there not to judge at first. That's what I thought. Seemed like somebody that was there just to be there for her to vent to and get out whatever it is that she has to say, right? Then China gets to saying, what kind of friend would let you drive their Ferrari? Alex was like, China blessed him. She changed his life. She saved him. She offered him clothes, food, shelter, rent free, took him on trips. She did this for him. She blessed him and he went and he messed this up. Now, true enough, He's working for China. He should have been talking crap about her, especially talking crap to somebody who you thought was going to keep her quiet. But they basically used that or however whatever went on with it, it ended up getting back to her. And I'm sure you didn't want that to go back to her. But at the same time, all blessings ain't good blessings. Trust me, I know. 
I done been blessed with some things that I wish I was not blessed with. Just because she was providing all this and doing all this for him, was it like working for the devil? Was he selling his soul? Was it worth it? I'm just saying, I'm an outsider looking in. I don't know. Y'all look, my nail broke today and this sucker hurt. I'm really trying to play it off like it don't hurt, but y'all oh, and I hurt. I can't wait to finish this video because I'm going to put a big old band. I don't want to put no band-aid on it while I'm talking because y'all going to see the band-aid, but y'all. Ooh, y'all pray for your Amy. So China whole dog on team done left her. Freshie is gone. Ashley is gone. Treasure is gone. Now Jamal is gone. Her whole dog on team is gone. So it's like, girlfriend, what you going to do next? Now she said, she told Jamal that, you know, it's no bad blood between them. No hard feelings, but she wants him to come and she wants him to come and get his crap at her guest house because I guess he's staying back there in the guest house. He had been staying there for a couple of months. So he's supposed to be coming by later on to get his stuff out the guest house. She says that she wants Alex to be there just in case it goes left and it pops off. Now, after that, Alex was like, well, you know, I'm with the full shit shit. So, um, you know what I'm saying? Just let me know and it can go down. Now, why are you so hyped to fight this boy? But then he did say that he really wasn't feeling Jamal as it was because he felt like Jamal was making a bunch of, like, snide remarks and little passive-aggressive things that he would say. So he's got his own issues that he has against Jamal. But, child, I'm like, Lord. Y'all, I'm not going to review this show next season. Auntie not going to do it. So when all else fails, she ends up calling the one person that she know, regardless of who she has it out with, how they have it out, she going to have her back. She calls Tonio. And of course, Tonio was like, I told you so. I told you one, none of them helpers there in your corner, then none of them care a doggone thing about you. So, um, what you need me to do? Mommy finna saddle up and ride out. China wants her to fly out there to LA where she is. So she says, so they can talk. Of course, so it can be on camera. Y'all can talk over the phone, but I guess, you know, you want to be face-to-face -face so you can get it all out, mother, daughter, whoop de whoop I mean, that's cute, y'all. And y'all see Tony open to have her own show, too? Y'all, she said it went from a hot girl summer to a hot, hot mama fall. Tonyo, if you don't sit your behind, but you know what? I give it to Tonyo. She look good. She done raised her baby. She got grandbabies. Hey, you get out there and you live your best life. But no, auntie, auntie ain't finna be reviewing it. Mm -mm. One thing I noticed about China, she seems like she's afraid to be alone because she wants Tony to come out there immediately. But Tony, we all know Tony's gonna be there for her regardless. She don't even have to like think twice about that. Tony are gonna be there because she wanted everybody else to be gone in the first place. Like she said, she done told her about Treasure. She tried to tell her about Jamal. So Tony was jumping at the bit for her <laughs> to get rid of every dog on body else. One thing I am proud about Tonio is she did not throw nothing in her face. She, other than saying I told you so, uh, I told you so. She didn't come back at her and throw nothing else in her face to make her feel bad or to put her down or nothing like that. So I was proud of Tonio, y'all. So I guess it's the next day, y'all. This episode didn't have but three dog on scenes, and they was all long and drawn out. So. She's at the guest house where Jamal is staying. Of course, she got the whole camera crew there. And her friend Alex is there, the makeup artist. One thing I did not like that China did is she went through that house exposing how Jamal was living. Yes, the house was dirty. I'm sure like she, she said the bathroom was nasty. I mean, it did look dirty. But this is my thing. That man was living there. He'd been living there for months and that was his space. Why would you expose him like that? It don't matter how nasty it was. It don't matter none of that. Yes, it is your house. And you can feel and you can do what you want to do. But as a human being, you could have confronted this man about this off camera some doggone wear. You didn't have to expose him like that in front of everybody. Got him all in the bathroom, all in his bedroom, all on his balcony. Like it was, child, you didn't have to do all of that. You did not have to do all of that. Then Jamal ends up calling saying that he's outside. Can I come and get my stuff? She's like, okay, so are you coming? Are you having a police escort you or how's it going to go down? Apparently when he had talked to her before, he said he was going to have a police escort come and help him so he can move his stuff out. When he gets there, finally, he's got a police escort. She says he called TMZ. Now, if y'all follow Jamal on Instagram, you see this fool streamed everything on live. Okay. 
You, if you ain't seen it online, baby, type in Jamal Live, the real Black China, in a YouTube search engine, because the live will show up. He's on live. Her attorney ends up coming to the house because she ends up, I, I don't know how much time had passed, but a police officer ended up calling China. Now, before that, y'all thought it was funny as hell. First, she didn't have no wig or nothing on. She just had a little skull cap on and had a little something on because, you know, China don't like showing her regular hair. So, soon as Jamal was there, she seen Jamal had the police and TMZ. Can somebody go grab me a wig? Had somebody throw her down a wig from downstairs, girl, so she can put that on there? I ain't mad at her. I ain't mad at her. Because the one thing I ain't going to leave my house without is earrings and some lipstick. That's me. I can't live my, I cannot leave my house without earrings and some lipstick or some lip gloss or some lip something. I have to have it. I auntie ain't going no damn where. I can't take my lipstick and my lip, I mean my earring. Oh, well, I ain't going no doggone where. That's just what it is. So the police officer ends up calling China and he's like, look here, you know, we just trying to escort Jamal in the house, get his stuff. It's hot out here. We ain't got time for this. Like, what in the world is going on? What is the, what's the problem is? She said that her lawyer is on the way. Her attorney will be there in 10 minutes. Once her attorney gets there, then she can open the gate and let him in so he can go into the guest house and get his things. Y'all, this was dumb. It was long and it was drawn out. Finally, he shows up. The attorney shows up. The attorney goes outside and talks with the police. The police, Jamal, some other guy, I don't know who it was, and everybody, they all outside, basically kind of going back and forth, not really bickering, but the police are like trying to talk to the attorney, like, look here, you're an attorney. You already know how certain laws go. He been living there. He got every right to go in there and collect his stuff. She's like, we don't have a problem with that, but he just can't be, he can't be by himself. Something like that, that he was saying, China was saying, I guess the day before he had got loud, crazy, and irate. So apparently she was in fear for her life. China, really. But they end up letting him in the house the whole time this fool is on live. He goes in, goes upstairs, barricades himself in the room, and he says he takes his clothes off and he in there packing up his clothes. He don't want to be filmed while he's doing that. And I don't blame him. That had to be embarrassing. That had to be humiliating. Like, how can you have a camera crew come and record me or film me why you kicking me out the house? Like, again, China, like, did she really have to do that? But, I mean, he was on live as well. So, quite honestly, Jamal was being just as petty as she was, too. Because if you didn't want it to go that far, like, y'all didn't have to act the fool the way that y'all did. But, again, I understand Jamal. You don't have to sit here and record me, neither. Then, next thing you know, Alex, the makeup artist, he starts screaming back and forth to Jamal. I'm a paid nigga. I do this, this, and that. I'm a trick. I fly people out. What's good? What you want to do? I make over 100000 a year. You ain't got this. Our tax bracket ain't the same. Like, what is... Why? What's the point of, 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 all of, of all of that? Why? He had no reason to get into that. Again, that is my opinion. Y'all don't nobody come for me because I ain't sent for you now. I'm just saying. I don't feel like... He had any reason to get into that argument. Yes, he was sticking up for China. Yes, what Jamal was doing was Jamal. I mean, but I mean, I, I try to see everything from everybody's point of view, from China's point of view. She wanted him out the house. She didn't want all this extra stuff going on from Jamal's point of view. You could have just let me come in and get my stuff. You didn't have to film me on this. From Alex's point of view, this is my home girl and I'm sticking up for my home girl because what you doing is now starting to mess with my doggone money. So I got a doggone problem with that. But I would think, are you still going to get paid anyway? I would hope you're going to get paid in the doggone way because, baby, I'm going to get paid for my time if I ain't going to get paid for my work. It ain't going to happen like that. So, y'all, this right here just end up going, dragging on, and on and on and on. Finally, another police officer shows up. And the episode ends from there. Now, we see on the next episode that he finally opens up the door. It's a gang of police officers going there. I think they're going to end up letting him get all the stuff out the room. Y'all, this episode right here, it if I was unsure before whether or not I would be reviewing the second season of The Real Black China, this episode right here put the cherry on the cake. No, ma'am. 
I'm not reviewing if it's the next season. No. If anything, you know what? Because Auntie Love Y'all, I might review the first episode of Tokyo Tony Show. But after that, it's a whole wrap. And that ain't fit to happen. Okay? Now, if y'all seen the episode, if it was anything that I missed, anything that I messed up, please do not hesitate. Drop it down below. Let me know. Let me know what y'all opinions and what y'all thoughts are. I love reading y'all's comments. I really do, and I appreciate every single person that leaves me a comment, because y'all see, I try to come respond back to everybody that sends me something. If I can't respond back, I at least put a heart on it. But I thank y'all for that. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share, and I'm T Mo. We'll see y'all in the next video. Peace out. What's up, y'all? Do me a favor and share the video. Please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think and um, hit that notification button so you will be up to date when I upload my latest videos. Ahala.